In this video, we will talk about free body diagrams or force diagrams and how to use these free body diagrams to solve problems associated with Newton's second law. So what is a free body diagram? It is a diagram that lists all forces that act directly on a body. So those forces must act directly on the body. Another thing to note is that one body, one diagram, which means if a system has two bodies, then you have two diagrams, or you have to sketch two free body diagrams. Say that an object that is moving on a floor and it's acted upon by let's say a rightward force of 2 newton and then leftward force of 1 newton so we have to show these forces because these are the forces acting directly in the body in addition you should also label the weight let's say i don't know 30 newtons and the normal force that the floor presses against the body, which should be the same in this case to the weight. So normal force is also 30 newtons. So this is an example of a free body diagram. Now you also have to label the acceleration a meter per second squared. So you see that the motion of this object is to the right and you have two forces. One is to the right to the left and these two forces will combine to get the net force that can be related to acceleration of the body. So this is how a free body diagram leads to the net force which is then associated with Newton's second law. So let's look at the idea behind a free body diagram. The idea is to give a full picture of all forces acting on a particular body. These forces combine to produce the net force which then describes the motion of the object. So if you know the net force, of course we can calculate things like acceleration and if you are given acceleration we can use the formula that we have a write down for the net force to calculate even some of the unknown forces in the system. So that is the idea of sketching a free body diagram before proceeding to solve the problem itself. Let's look at examples of how to construct force diagrams for a particular system. So what we have shown here is a system that consists of two bodies, body one and body two, and body two is being pulled by a force F. The two bodies are connected by a string, which has tensions in it, obviously. So we want to first, let's say, write down an expression for the acceleration. So how do we sketch all the forces that act on body one and body two? Now there are two bodies, so remember the rules. If there are two bodies, there should be two separate diagrams. So let's sketch these two separate diagrams. So let's start with body one. So body one obviously has its weight that acts downward. So let's label that as a W1. It could be anything. It could be 10 newtons, 20 newtons, or whatever. And then there is this normal force that the floor presses against the body one, which goes like that in a direction 90 degrees to the surface. So that is the force normal, let's say normal one. And then obviously you have tension from this string that's acting directly on body one in a forward direction. And that's it. These are the three forces that act directly on body one. And due to these forces, of course, you have the acceleration. A. So, of course, if the body 1 has mass 
m1, you see that we can relate the acceleration, the forward force, which is tension that's causing the acceleration, and mass through Newton's second law by quite simply t equals to m1a. End of the analysis for body one. Let's look at body two. So what are the forces that act directly on body two? Now obviously there is a force F that's dragging the whole system rightward. And then you have again tension in the string, but then the direction of tension that acts on body two now is leftward and it's not rightward as in body one. So the tension acts rightward on body one, but leftward on body two. And of course you have its own weight, let's call it W2, and then normal force that acts upward, normal two. So this is tension right there. And both bodies, because they are part of the same system, they must be moving with the same acceleration. So from here, we can also write down Newton's second law for body two, namely the net force for body two is the forward minus the tension. Obviously, the forward force is greater than the tension, otherwise the object will not accelerate to the right. The mass of a body 2 is, say, m2 times the acceleration. So, we have the second equation, namely Newton's second law for body 2. So, in this example, if you are given the acceleration, you can plug the acceleration inside here to find the tension and then plug the tension in here to find the force and so on and so forth. Another example is an object that's being pulled along an inclined plane like that. So let's say the mass of the object is m and it's being pulled along the ramp by a force f. So what are the forces that act directly on this object f, on this object m? So one is the force f itself. The second thing, obviously, is the weight that's always acting downward. Let's call it W, and that is mg. And then the normal force that acts perpendicular to the surface of that inclined plane, and let's call that normal force. And that's it. So you don't have any other forces acting directly. And obviously, there will be an acceleration like that or downward depending on which whether weight is greater than the force or the force is greater than the weight when i say greater than the weight there is a component of that weight that is acting parallel to the plane which we can label as w parallel and component of a weight that's acting downward opposite to that normal force which we can label like that so there will be a more complete discussion on inclined planes in subsequent videos, but for now I just want to show how to label all the direct forces acting on a body using a free body diagram. Let's look at this particular example. You have two forces acting on a 4 kilogram object along a frictionless floor. So the floor is the screen of the computer. So one force is 8 newtons due east. So you can take that to be east, and that is west, north, and south. So 8 newtons is acting like that. So that is the force 8 newtons. And then the second force is 6, new 6 newtons acting 55 degrees north of west. So west is this way, so north of west, which means in that direction, making an angle of 55 degrees, and its magnitude is 6 newtons. Now we want to calculate the body's acceleration. Now we have to consider both the x motion and the y motion here before we calculate the acceleration, so let's just do that. Now the x direction, which means the, the horizontal direction like that, this way or that way. The force along the x-direction is 8 minus 6 cosine 55 
degrees. So this is the net force along the x direction. So 6 cosine 55 is the x component of that 6 Newton force going in a leftward direction, which is 4.56 Newtons. So the acceleration along the x direction will be that 4.56 Newton divided by the mass, which is 4 kilograms, and that's going to give you 1.14 meter per second squared. Now let's do the y component. So the y component of that 6 Newton force is heading that way. The 8 Newton force does not have any y component. So the net force along the y direction is simply 6 sine 55 degrees which is 4.91 newtons so the acceleration along the y direction is that 4.91 divided by 4 and that's going to give you 1.23 meter per second squared so that is the y component of the acceleration. Now we can calculate the magnitude of the acceleration. The magnitude of the acceleration of the body as a whole is the x component, which is 1.14 squared, plus the y component, 1.23 squared square root. And that's going to be 1.68 meter per second squared. So that's the magnitude of the body's acceleration. Let's look at a second problem. So two crates, one with mass 4 kilo and the other one is 5 kilograms, sits on the frictional floor. A person is pulling horizontally on the 5 kg with a force of F that, create, that creates an acceleration of 3 meter per second squared. Calculate the magnitudes of the force F and the tension. So let's sketch the free body diagrams. There should be two. So one for the 4 kg, the other one is for the 5 kg. Let's do the 4 kg uh, free body diagram first. So the forces that are directly acting on a 4 kg object is one, the tension, which we don't know. And then obviously there is this weight, which is four times gravity. Gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared. And then you have obviously the normal force, which is in this case equals to the weight which is 4g newtons as well and then you must also label the acceleration acceleration is to the right and we know the acceleration is three meter per second squared now both the crates will have the same acceleration because they are part of the same system so now the problem is easy you can immediately solve for the tension the net force acting on the 4 kg object is the tension which we want to know and that, according to Newton's second law, is the mass, which is 4 kilograms times the acceleration, which is 3. And that would immediately give you the value of the tension as 12 newtons. So now we know the tension is indeed 12 newtons. Now we can solve for the remaining force, which is F. To find force F, let's sketch the free body diagram for the 5 kilogram object. So let's uh, list down all the forces that act directly on 5 kg object. The first thing is the unknown force, F, that we want to find. The second thing is the tension, the tension from the same string that connects 4 and 5 kg objects will now act leftward on the 5 kg object. It has the same value, 12 newtons, because it is tension in the same string. And then you have the acceleration, which we know to be 3. They Both these objects are the same system, part of the same system, so they must have the same acceleration. And then, of course, you can label the, the weight, which acts vertically downward, like that. So that is 5 times gravity. And then you have the normal force, in this case, the same as the weight, 5 times gravity. Now the net force acting on this 5 kg object is the force minus tension, which is 12 newtons. That equals mass 5 times acceleration, which is 3. So your force F comes to 27 newtons, which then solves the problem.